All right. Good Monday, makers. This time we are live, doing a, a live build roundup. Normally, on Monday nights around this time, we release like a weekly build roundup of builds and projects shared in the MakerPipe community. But tonight we're doing it live, and sometimes we do live streams on Wednesdays. But we thought because it's the 100th Monday, I'm pretty sure we've hit every single Monday where we've done a roundup. So I'm pretty sure it's the 100th Monday of the build roundup series. So happy Pretty sure. <laughs> you better be sure. We're doing this special. I know. <laughs> and he stole my line, good Monday makers. I know. Sometime about halfway through, I started filling in for Dave every now and again. And I was like, I, I'm just going to do exactly what Dave does because he does a good job at these. So I'm just going to say I, I use the same adjectives as Dave, which we run out of adjectives pretty fast. But <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I kind of did steal your line. But anyway, you know. But yeah, I'm 99% sure we've done 100 episodes. I don't think we've missed a Monday. Uh, I think there was like one Monday we almost did, and we ended up doing like a duck blind round, uh, roundup or something like that. But in anyway, happy 100th episode of Naked Pipe Monday. So we thought it'd be fun just to kind of hop on and kind of do a live stream for the 100th episode instead of doing the normal thing, kind of roundup. So what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a throwback. So I thought it would be fun to go back and kind of it's because I realized uh, it's almost the two year anniversary of the uh, community as well. So I think it was June 6th of 2020 that we launched the community. It's crazy that it's been almost two years. So I thought it would be fun to just to go back and kind of uh, celebrate the 100th episode of Maker Pie Monday and kind of celebrate the two year anniversary of the community by going back all the way to the very beginning and looking at some builds uh, that were shared early on, some of the OG community builds. I thought that would be thought that'd be fun and if you've been following the episodes for a while it might be a nice you know kind of i don't know what you call it just kind of reminder and see some of the early builds if you've been following for a while and if you've been following more recently then it'll be just good to see some some builds from a while ago because i remember there being a lot of cool stuff i mean all the builds that you guys share are cool but you know early on there was it was kind of cool to see because normally we'd only gotten emails through and i i, I really want to thank i mean we have reviewed so many builds that I really want to thank everybody for posting their builds. I mean, a hundred episodes, each episode, maybe, I don't know, eight builds, five builds, something like that. So it's a lot of maker pipe builds and thanks everybody for sharing those to the community. Oh yeah, for sure. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder. Cause it is awesome to see all the builds. Cause I think it's, you know, at least five builds per episode for like a hundred episodes. So that's gotta be 500 builds at least. So it's really awesome to see. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back in kind of the early days of the community. And we're going to take gonna... it way back. <laughs> yeah. Throwing it back. Throwback Monday is now a thing. I've been trying to aggr aggressively scroll back through the community. <laughs> Are you there? Tr trying to get back. I'm pretty close. Trying to get back to the early days. We'll, we'll kind of pick up. And maybe we'll just start where I am now and just go down and see where we end up. And I think this is a good place to start because we're at. We want to thank Axel for stopping by in the chat. Hey, Axel. Thanks for oh, yeah. coming by. You've been on MPM quite a few times, so we appreciate that. Yeah, thanks so much, Axel, for coming by. And we'll start here, and we'll just kind of go down through the through the builds. So this first is uh, Canopy Rebuild, and this is actually Randy shared this uh, MPM episode because he was his build was featured in this, and he actually built this really great canopy. And this is one of the the early canopies we saw in the community. And he did such a great design here. And I remember he built one, and then he had some issues with snow. I think the tarp kind of was holding the snow. So he he rebuilt it, and he was using an interesting hack here. Uh, he did this Bimini connector attached to the wall, and then he made this, this kind of reinforced connector. So he used conduit, flattened with a vise, drilled through the conduit, and then I think he has a picture here. Yeah, so this conduit that was kind of squeezed inside this other piece of conduit had a hole drilled through it, and this nut and bolt went through the bolt, or sorry, through the conduit, and then he did that to kind of secure it and create that, that extra pullout strength there for this Bimini connector attached to the wall. I think, you know, thinking about this as we've seen some other hacks, another common thing that we see is drilling through the connector Mm -hmm. and then throwing a self-tapping screw or a bolt through the connector and through the conduit. Right. You know, and that this is kind of a different take on that, but a way to 
to help the conduit from not pulling out at the end of the connector. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a good thing to mention because it's kind of a little bit different instead of having to drill through the connector. You know, you just drill through the conduit in that way. Uh, and I think we should do a video on squeezing kind of with a vice because I think it would be pretty simple to do something like that. And then, you know, it's a lot easier to drill through a flat surface like that than a round, round object. But yeah. I mean, that method of just making with conduit has been around for a long time. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I hear people talk about how they used to, you know, make geodesic domes and they, they crimp the end of conduit and drill it and then make it that way. So that's kind of a tried and true method but it does take a lot of fabrication you know you're mm -hmm. squishing the conduit you're drilling it out so right uh pros and cons there but yeah randy did an awesome job on that yeah it's a really great canopy and we can see let's look at the finished build one last time because he added lights to it and he had this whole just this nice area there's like a maker pipe plant stand here he also built in a speaker mount we did an interview with uh, randy you can check it out the thumbnail is randy randy's pizza patio <laughs> Uh, he likes he, cooking pizza. Yeah, he, he has pizza a oven pizza on oven, and he built uh, a pizza peel stand, which we'll probably see here soon. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out that interview. But that's a great, great build. Next up is a rooftop basket from Steven, four foot by four foot by four and a half inches. And I like this because he had this. I feel like this isn't far back enough, Jake. This is the, like early last year. February of last year. Really? Yeah, it's been almost 14 months since these were posted. <laughs> I know, but gosh, 100 episodes, that's almost two years. Scroll back a little bit more. How long? Okay, we'll keep going. Keep going, because I know we, I guess there are some. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. And while you're doing that, I mean, we've always just thought of this as uh, uh, a way to talk about builds that people post on the community. And a lot of times when I'm recording them or Jake's recording them, it's just pull up the community post and then just talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, excuse us for sometimes rambling oh, yeah. about the builds. <laughs> um, but we just kind of want our, we wanted to put our honest reaction and thoughts about these cool builds out there in NPM. And that's the whole idea for the series. So um, it's been a lot of these uh, it's, but it, you know, it's also my favorite part of the week um, oh, yeah, is checking sure. out these builds because it, it's really a good motivator when you're seeing the awesome things that you guys are building with Maker Pipe. Um, that just gets gets the week going. Yeah, it's really great, and then it kind of gives an opportunity to to kind of talk through some designs and just kind of share what people do because I think that's a good step for kind of figuring out uh, you know how to build something is you kind of look at the connectors and familiarize, familiarize yourself with uh, kind of how the connectors go together and the amount of pipes they connect and that kind of thing. And then you're able to look at a build in the community and be like, oh, I recognize that connector. That's a 90 in the corner. Oh, I see that brace. That's a 45. Uh, it's a good way to kind of, kind of go from an idea to the next step of kind of planning your own build. Right. And we've had so many just hacks and creative uses um, that somebody's included in their build, right? They had a specific problem they were trying to solve. They did it in a unique way. And a lot of times the NPM is the first time we talk about it. I can remember a lot of them like that. And then, um, you know, we, we, de, uh, excuse me, we dive a little bit deeper on that concept and, uh, that's made a lot of videos that way or, or informed us on how we could solve problems that way. Oh yeah, definitely. Because sometimes we, you know, people run into those specific situations, and then they come up with those hacks and those solutions, and then by sharing it in the community, kind of just gave us an idea of a common solution that somebody would need to solve, uh, and we were or a common problem that needed to be solved, and then we would have kind of an idea for you know a video or a new hack to share, or even a new accessory to add, and that kind of thing. All right, we're getting really close now. Right now it's just a white screen, but we're getting really close because this is posted two years ago. It says, and that's right when the community was launched. And and I'd like to know too um, from anybody watching this: how often do you look back in the community? Is anybody even looking back on these builds? Because I feel like there's a lot of good knowledge. But let us know in the chat or in the comments. You know if it's something you regularly do or have done ever before. 
Now, towards the end, I'll, I'll kind of show something I've been working on in the community of kind of going back and indexing. It's like you have topics in the community, you can tag gardening or whatever. And I've been going back trying to make sure that every post had some sort of tag or topic just to make it easier to find. Because like Dave said, you know, just because they're a couple years old doesn't mean they don't have good knowledge and kind of good techniques to, to get inspiration from. Um, so trying to make that a little bit easier, uh, you know, by indexing it in the community. We'll look at that towards the end, but we're, we're a few posts away from being at the very beginning. It's kind of a trip down memory lane because we <laughs> see the early episodes of Maker Pipe Monday and all that posted early on. All right. Let's see here. And then early on, too, it's just me and Dave and Kelly and Blake just kind of posting some builds that we had, uh, you know, kind of in the in the days from the Kickstarter and kind of just taking those. And and uh, that's what kind of what started with just my making those posts. All right, it's taken a second to load. <laughs> I, I don't even feel like you're all the way back there. Oh yeah, this is this is pretty close. We're we're maybe like ten or fifteen posts away. Yeah, and and thanks to everybody who kind of kicked off the community, uh, posting their builds with Baker Pipe. We just. Uh, reached out to to friends and family, anybody that had built with Maker Pipe, and um, you know they got the community started. Yeah, it was a great it was a great interaction uh, uh, early on to kind of the reaction to the community and the builds that everybody was sharing was really awesome, which we're about to about to see. All right. Okay. Here's yeah. yeah these, these are some are the, of the ones that <laughs> that I remember. Yeah, these are some of the early early builds because yeah because we were sharing like hacks and stuff from the kickstarter and all these builds were from early on i'm putting this mouse to work tonight okay there i remember some of the early control your feed kind of things <laughs> i mean you go back too far and it's all like <laughs> me and Kelly and you and my mother. Yeah, just making <laughs> so making posts from the early days. We have over. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is the first week I just saw. Okay, okay. so we're getting close. Yeah, sorry, it's taking a second to scroll all the way back, but you guys have posted so many builds over the last couple of years. There's no easy way to go back to the very beginning other than just scrolling. All right, come on. Oh, we're starting a new YouTube series where we talk about builds from the community. It's going to be called Maker Pipe Monday. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. I remember that. Yep, there's some family. <laughs> All these early builds from us and friends and family, like Dave was saying. There's Dave's mom, Blake. All right, well, you might as well start. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll start here with Matthew's build. Uh, we call Matthew the king of hacks because of all the cool stuff he shared early on, including, see, he had this desk here that he built, or he actually already had this made, but he found wood paneling that matched the kind of the, the color of the wood and the texture. So he created this kind of surround using uh, using the maker pipe and conduit, and then he just wrapped the conduit with black shrink wrap, and kind of created the um, kind of created the same look as this desk he already had, and that allowed him to just kind of create that that same look and texture and shelving system for the desk. So that was that was really cool. And he was a Kickstarter backer, which early on, you know, a lot of the builds were friends and family, and then also Kickstarter backers because uh, we we kind of invited them to join and then we gave them the badge that you can see here uh, for sharing their initial builds but Matthew owns a timing company so he does a lot of road races for um, like running races what, is, is that just called just yeah. a running race okay. road race road race so he has a, a, roast, a road racing company where he does the timing for and he built these really cool stands that actually hold the, the timing equipment but what's really cool is he made this kind of box for 
uh, that has the wood slotted, so it kind of stores everything flat pack. And then he made the connectors where the T connectors here that attach to the frames that hold up the um, hold up the timing equipment. Those legs fold up, and then the part that holds up this timing equipment folds up, and it allows them to kind of flat pack this all. As you can see, it folds up and down, and kind of allows them to flat pack everything, and uh, and you know take it to, from race to race, which is really cool. He's come up with quite a few modular solutions mm -hmm. to allow him to set up really easy, store everything quickly. Uh, that's I would say that's kind of been his his niche and contributed a lot to uh, to the community. Oh yeah, for sure. And it makes sense for something like this because he's you know got a trailer or something like that. He's got to maximize the space to be able to take all this stuff to an event. So coming up with a clever solution like that makes a lot of sense to to kind of flat pack and store it. So that's really cool. We have an interview with Matthew as well. Uh, you can find out on the channel where he kind of explains some of the hacks that he shared and some of his different builds. Do you have the picture in picture? Um, no, it's no. For some reason, it's not. When I click it, it's not oh, there. Okay. For some reason. Um, so this next one, this is shared by Kelly, and this was originally from the Kickstarter. Maybe you can tell us more about this one, Dave. Yeah, this was original Kickstarter. You know, we thought. I mean, we were just coming up with builds that we could show in the Kickstarter. And this was kind of like a garage. I got all my old motorcycle uh, <laughs> helmets and tanks. I, you know, I've been into uh, classic or antique motorcycles uh, a while back. So I just thought it was good eye candy. But um, yeah, this was just a shelving system that we came up with. And drill press, that's probably a part of the Maker Pipe history in some way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is, uh, that, that drill press is, <laughs> has drilled quite a few parts early on. And that conduit bender, too. That's, it looks nice and fresh in this picture, but uh, it's definitely been put to its, through its paces since right. then. But that's a really simple shelf design. I think it's mostly T-connectors. All T-connectors. We didn't have oh, anything okay. else at that Oh, point. yeah. Nice. All T-connectors. Looks like Lee's in the chat. Just received my first maker pipe order. You guys rock. Planning to reinforce my greenhouse framework. That sounds like a great project. Thanks so much for the order. Glad to hear. We'd love to see uh, Slee the Greenhouse and the reinforcement whenever you get it finished. So definitely share that. Uh, thanks so much again for the order and for stopping by. Next thanks, up, Lee. Next up is another build. This is another Kickstarter backer. This is Rita S. These and, are my, my parents. Yeah, this is Dave's parents. And, and my dad built these stools, actually. Uh, kind of his study in, in furniture, but he... He did some cool things where he like curved the legs a little bit and uh, did a cool um, fabric wrapped uh, top there with mm. some foam padding. Uh, but yeah, this is where he uh, has lunch and he has some maker pipe <laughs> chairs. Nice. Some of the early uses of rubber pipe feet, I would imagine, too. Yeah, probably. Looks really cool. Is that He's 9 degree connectors? Since replaced those with silver connectors. Oh, nice. Because yeah. he likes the the all silver look and even went as far as polishing the conduit. Oh, wow. Which, uh, you know, is, is a nice touch. He just takes some, I think some Scotch bright and, um, polishing compound mm -hmm. and it, it gave it a, a cool look, a uniform look. Nice. That might be a good video topic for us to kind of explain that. We've had some people ask about ways to polish the conduit. That's Have cool. we? Yeah. People, I mean, I was jealous. We, Whenever we went to Arizona, we checked out the conduit there. We were building stuff in Arizona. And uh, I, I don't remember the brand of the conduit, but I was jealous because theirs was like a really nice brushed steel. I don't know why. It just looked it was so much better. Wheatland tube. Okay. Wheatland tube, I think, looks pretty good compared to some of the stuff. Um, and not that it's bad, but we have primarily uh, Nucor. Mm. is like the brand of conduit and there's only a handful but that wheatland tube looks pretty good yeah yeah i was pretty jealous but if we could do something where we kind of polish the conduit and kind of achieve that look it might be might be something worth doing definitely next up is a build from jim and he said he used a conduit in a bunch of different ways and i'm gonna see if i can't i don't think it's worth playing okay but i'll i'll, I'll kind of summarize it uh Jim is a good friend uh, from drone racing, among other things. That's a hobby that we shared. And uh, Jim has a 
drone racing course in his backyard, <laughs> and he's always trying to come up with the most efficient way to put make gates. I mean, they're, they're like they're fabric gates with a with a uh, structure, and he made some with conduit and maker pipes. So uh, Jim kind of just showed how he did it. Right, and mostly used PVC in the past, but you know you got these drones and they go like what. I don't know, 80, 100 miles an hour, some of them. <laughs> no, what? They don't go that fast? No, not at all. What? I thought they went like at least 70. No way, man. Oh, wow. Okay, well. <laughs> I mean, it seems fast. Yeah. But no, nowhere there. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I lied. It's not that fast, but still, they are going pretty quick, and so they were hitting these gates, and they wanted to just kind of reinforce it, so that's when they started using conduit and maker pipe. Well, PVC is a lot more forgiving. On those gates. I've lost many a drone to conduit gates. <laughs> that's, that's true. I guess there is some pros and cons. Do you want the drone to survive or do you want the gates to survive? Right. Uh, so that's kind of the the battle between the two. Um, but yeah, Jim's great. And he's local to us too. Because we were doing some drone racing. I didn't do it as much as Dave, but you know Dave's probably raced the track at his house a ton of times. Uh, but next up is uh, a build from Ethan Carter. And Ethan is fantastic. He does really cool like leatherworking and woodworking and all kinds of different projects. He has a YouTube channel, uh, Ethan Carter Designs. And one of the builds that he did early on um, was this mobile tool cart that he did. And it had uh, an outfeed table uh, built into it. So basically he had this wood panel here that had a 90-degree connector, but it only had the, the top, or we call it the outside 90. But he kind of did it in a way to where it would pop on and off of the top of the framework. And it was really cool. Then he just used this pegboard attached to the frame. I think he just used zip ties. Uh, and then he attached some, you know, common woodworking tools and stuff to the to the pegboard there. And then he had everything on caster so he could he, roll it around. He had to work outside sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, on a nice day. Uh, you know, so he's able to roll it out into the driveway. We all don't have a full-on wood shop, right? So a lot of times it's store the tools in the garage out of the way. And then when it's time to work roll them out so that was one of his solutions which i thought was a great great build he did yeah it's really smart because it has a small footprint you know so he can store it in the garage but he doesn't have to necessarily use it in the garage he can just roll it out and then add the outfeed table and i think he rolled his saw outside as well and used it that way yeah but yeah. that's that's more of a common thing right like mm -hmm. you can get stands made for your portable uh table saw mm -hmm. right so that's a pretty common thing to just buy. Yeah. That's a great build from Ethan. He's done some other stuff. We might we might get to his other builds. But definitely check out his YouTube channel, Ethan Carter Designs. He's also on Instagram, and he posts, you know, short form of his builds and stuff there. Uh, we also have an interview with him. So. Yeah, and maybe we hit, you know, if a creator or community member has a few here, maybe we just hit one or two mm -hmm. and keep rolling because there's so many. Yeah. You know, how many are we going to go through? I don't know. We'll just keep going. Yeah. We'll hit some. But yeah, early on, you know, like Matthew had already had a bunch of builds finished. So, you know, he had <laughs> quite a stockpile of builds to share with the community. Uh, so he, he did a lot of builds early on. But this is just another gate that he made for his racing business um, that he put together. And you can see a flat packs there. But, you know, check out his profile. He's got all kinds of, of cool stuff that he's done and shared, and especially his hacks. Uh, this is a post from Blake. Big improvements need big steel. That's pretty cool. I guess he was working on the CNC, just taking some pictures. Um, but here's another build from Reed, and this is just a simple uh, coffee table, Life Edge coffee table. We actually did a whole video about this build. There's some backstory with Dave and uh, and kind of the build. We did a how to make it episode, um, so you can check that out if you want to kind of recreate it. But it's just four connectors there uh, attached to this Live Edge table. But it's a really I think it was a good example of like, you know, just something. You have a tabletop. You want to turn it into a table. This is an easy way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be too complicated. Uh, this was a, a cool build in that way. Yeah, for sure. Because it's just the four four connectors. There's just four verticals with the end caps and shrink wrap on the conduit. So, yeah, really simple design. But it's really cool with that live edge slab. So, really great build. Uh, oh, this, this is the first video we ever posted, I think, to the channel. The Maker Pipe T-Connector Overview. That's how many videos have we done since then? I think the other day I saw, I think we we're up to like 260 something. 
somewhere around there. It's a lot of YouTube videos, folks. <laughs> yeah, there's there's been quite a few, but in the last two years, this was the first one. So, you know, I, we usually do one at least per week, one or two. So, you know, we've, yeah, that's why we're here with the 100 Maker Pipe Monday episodes. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of a cool throwback to the first connector overview. Don't watch it. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, so, <laughs> what do we have next? Oh yeah, this is, it's okay. To the this is funny. This is this is a scooter trailer. Yeah, I don't uh, see. I don't think he actually built it out of conduit. No, yet. he, he was, didn't. He Who? Was ca- okay. Who is it? I've okay. No, I'll, I'll explain. No, this. no, no. <laughs> I'll explain. <laughs> no, I don't think we should even dive into Probably it. Probably not. No, we shouldn't. Dave thinks this is not. This is me. Like secretly making uh, a post, trying to get us to make this scooter trailer. An e-scooter trailer? Just because it's an electric scooter and I had a one wheel, he was like, "Oh, this has got to be Jake." And I was like, uh, "You know, I don't, it's not me. It's not. This is a real person who is really looking to build this." How do you know? I just know. It's not you, though. You promise. I promise it's not me. Okay. I wouldn't lie on the hundredth episode of Maker Pipe Monday. I shouldn't have been so close-minded as to not know that you could put a trailer on an e-scooter totally valid thing Mm -hmm. now um but you know we didn't see it so it wasn't built this is disappointing Uh, if anyone's ever used an e-scooter with a trailer we want to hear from you tell us it's a real thing there is a build where it was a trailer we might see it i can't remember when it was posted but do you remember the pug trailer where he said his pug kept rubbing up against the yeah but that was a bike trailer yeah, I guess. A bike trailer, I, that's a thing, right? Yeah. The e-scooter trailer? I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it even work. Yeah, true. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I'm just not versed <laughs> in it. Of course, it's a, probably a real thing. He had photos of it. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. We'll have to We'll have to make I've always wanted to make a trailer for the one wheel, but anyway, that's a whole other topic for another day. It can't be done. <laughs> can't be done. This is, uh, this is cool. This is from Rick, and uh, Dave probably knows more about this than I do. Uh, because I think this was from Kickstarter days, wasn't it? It was from Kickstarter days. Yep. This was from a high school and they were doing fundraising at the mm. high school. And um, yeah, this was their cart to sell stuff in the at lunch. Nice. Because what did Rick say? Rick didn't actually build this, but he said it was a cool build. I love this product. I've used it to build various things. Launch stands for drone racing, shells for garage, etc. I mean, is this not cool? Okay, yeah, he was he was a fan of this photo. I see. And but Rick's done a couple builds with Maker Pipe, so mm-hmm. he uh, he was kind of highlighting this build. But yeah, this was a neat one. Nice. We have. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. E y'all in the chat. Uh, they said they saw a trailer with a baby in it behind an electric scooter. Axel, Axel says, <laughs> does the e-scooter go 70 miles an hour, too? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, that is funny. 100 miles an hour. <laughs> That'd be a fast e-scooter. That'd be pretty gnarly. They say it couldn't be done. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> I'm sure there's a YouTube video out there somewhere. Somebody going 70 miles an hour. This is another video we did early on of just showing the shrink wrap. That's cool. Let's see a lot of those. And this is a cool build. This is um, Meg Carter. So we actually, if you remember, probably, I don't know, six months ago, I guess it was around Thanksgiving, there was a live stream where we talked to Meg and John, who's uh, currently doing a homestead kind of build out. And um, they, this is Meg. This is her early on. She had a business for, uh, Dave's probably should be talking about this because I think you know more. Uh, but Yeah. Um, Meg and John uh, both worked on this business. Uh, Meg started it. And they did sea glass jewelry. So first it was made by Meg. Uh, it was all wire-wrapped sea glass jewelry. And then they did prism um, jewelry. And this is their trade show booth. Over the years, they've come up with some really awesome trade show booths. And this is no exception. So uh, this was one iteration where they used Maker Pipe to make the tables that were easily collapsible and kind of put together. And then um, I think there was some pipe and drape around the outsides as well. So uh, that's what uh, Meg and John have always been great supporters of us and Maker Pipe. So thanks to them. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, really great tables. Because, I mean, they're like three different heights, I, heights, I think. 
So that's cool. Yep. And, and uh, shout out to their channel, Walnuts and Wineberries, where they're doing their homestead. Uh, really great channel. See all the stuff that they're doing to create their their homestead. Um, really neat documentation of that. Yeah, for sure. It's really cool kind of seeing their journey from just woods to having a house and everything. Uh, next is a build from Carol. And this was uh, a jumping jack trailer here in Phoenix where the sun and the storm can be so bad. So she's got, I'm not even sure if I know what a jumping jack trailer is. If somebody in the I chat think knows. It, I think it was a can. Can you pop open uh, yeah. one of those photos? Yeah, let's do this. I'm afraid to lose my spot, so I'm going to oh, open yeah. a new tab. Okay, you don't have to. No sweat. Don't don't risk it. Okay. But um, I think it was just a, a camper trailer that she had. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, we're there. Okay, yeah, we got a picture. But I remember talking with Carol, and this was one of those things where she kind of felt like it was a challenge to uh, build this, this enclosure, but she wanted to do it herself. And uh, we talked numerous times about, like, you know, her project and how she was doing it. And uh, a neat thing that she did a, a custom canvas mm. um, top for this. And I thought this was neat because what you're looking at is around where the connectors are, she did um, some reinforced, like, kind of rawhide and ties uh, so it wouldn't wear through the connectors. So I was super impressed by the build she did. And that she tackled it herself and made the the frame herself too. Yeah, really, really great build. Kelly said uh, it's a pop up camper, a style of pop up camper. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so that's cool. Really great. It's one of the first enclosures we ever, or I guess it's more of a kind of a, uh, I don't know, you know. I nope. just lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, <laughs> storage or canopy. Storage or, canopy. Yeah. Sure. Canopy enclosure kind of thing. Yeah. Really great uh, from Carol. Next up is a build from Dave. You want to talk about this one? Oh, yeah. I posted this. We were going camping, and um, I wanted to keep the mosquitoes and the bugs out. So I brought with me, I guess it'd be eight pieces of conduit, a couple connectors, and then we hung this bug net around the picnic table. You just use zip ties for that? Use zip ties. Worked out great. It was nice. It was nice and easy. Um, you know, cause you have something of that size, how do you really support it? And I think I bought the bug net on Amazon for 10, 15 bucks. Mm. Uh, so it was really kind of an inexpensive build and I, you know, who knows what I used the conduit for after that, <laughs> right? Like that conduit was repurposed after that camping trip. Um, but neat little build. Nice. Next up is a build from Sue and this is actually Kelly's mom. Uh, and she built this bin storage rack, which is really great. Rich, Rich built this. Oh, okay. Uh, and Sue posted it. I see. Uh, but yeah, this was another one done with all T's. Uh, they moved into this place and had all these bins of storage and came out great. It really, I think this was Rich's first build and he did awesome. Mm -hmm. he, he got a bunch of, he got a bunch of seconds, second <laughs> T's and he put them to use. Nice. So. Yeah, because it's holding 16 total bins there. Yeah. So it's a really great storage solution. And I like how it's anchored to the baseboards here with the one-hole straps. Mm -hmm. um, I'd imagine they probably did something up top similar to that. I think so. Um, so, yeah, that's a really great storage shelf, especially if you've got a lot of bins. Most of the time you just stack them, but having them where you could easily access anything that's in there uh, is definitely definitely a plus. And this is cool. This is from Steve. This is uh, an orchid hut that they had and they built a shelf and i think this is one of the first diy flanges we saw in the community where i think they just got like a small piece of wood mm -hmm. and then they just notched a, a hole in it for the conduit uh, to kind of sit in really and got the wheels turning on this i think oh yeah yeah being able to do a flange for conduit uh, this is one of the one of the early kind of ideas that was shared and being able to put it in that kind of you kind of i guess clamp uh, what, what would you call that it's not really clamped but just the, the friction of being between the two posts and then half of it or part of it's inside of that block. It's, it's captive, captive. right? Okay. So imagine just a piece of wood with a hole in it and it's screwed in place and, and literally the conduit can't go anywhere. Um, and I found out, I think it was this post or another one, but they make drill bits specifically mm. sized to conduit. Oh, wow. Um, 
for electricians. Imagine that, right? <laughs> but you can use a, a one inch paddle bit as well or spade bit. I'm not sure what the right term is, hmm. uh, but that's another good size that'll work just fine. Nice. And we might see some other builds, people notch conduit to do something similar, but this is a really great idea. And they just did the same thing up top here. So they've got these two horizontal pipes connected between the you know the wooden beams here. I guess it's not a beam if it's vertical. Uh, anyway, they've got the captive conduit and then they just use T connectors kind of at an angle there to kind of support the, the shelf here for the orchid. So I guess they just store their orchids on that whenever they're out in the in the uh, kind of garden area. So that's really cool. And next up is a build from Sam, and this is a custom boat shade cover, large enough to cover all the seating. And this is something that we see a lot nowadays, and it's really cool to see kind of the early, early kind of builds with this technique where you adapt conduit to other types of tubes and different diameter things, because uh, it looks like he's got some kind of a clamp here that's going over this pretty large diameter uh, kind of tower tube here on this boat, and then he adapted that to conduit. And then once you once you have the conduit, then you can, you know, do whatever you want on top of that with the connectors. Because he just, you know, made those four vertical posts with the, with the conduit attached to those. And then he just built this, this sunshade or this canopy using the conduit and, uh, and connectors. And I, I think what's cool is it looks like there's a crossover clamp that he just did with some rope maybe. Kind of a DIY crossover. I've never noticed that before. So that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Kind of a lashing. Mm-hmm. Neat. Yeah, pretty cool. That's a great build from Sam. And next up is a build from Mark Andre. And this is a Maker Pipe computer desk. And this one's cool because it's got it's kind of a two-tiered design. Uh, so you can see this side is kind of lower than this one. And maybe it's because of this rolling shelf or this ro uh, rolling cabinet here uh, being they wanted it to be kind of cover, clear that. So this side is a little bit higher. Maybe this is just kind of like a work area or a shelf. But anyway, he just used kind of a T connector to, to go down off of this horizontal pipe and kind of create this second tier that's a little bit lower to the ground than, you know, you can see from the mouse and stuff that he sits here. That's really cool. Oh, he's got the, <laughs> got the community pulled up. That's cool. That's a great computer desk. One of the early first computer desks we ever saw. Oh, this is a, this might be useful for, uh, the chat, because remember Elise said they were going to be doing some reinforcement to green, greenhouses. This is a build from Scott, uh, who had a Harbor Freight greenhouse early on. Uh, and, you know, Harbor Freight, you know, they have they have some good stuff. But he said that they he lives in an area with uh, a lot of wind and snow. So he added basically braces that are just kind of similar to what we saw with the boat. Uh, they're just kind of adapted to the rails that are in the in the greenhouse. And it looks like... It's pretty similar in diameter for those for those tubes that are there already. Never noticed that before either. Do you, did you talk to Scott about this early on? Or I no? did not. Okay. No. So yeah, this is cool. And he just basically just branched off of the existing framework and just added conduit and supports just wherever he needed or wherever he wanted really just to add some extra support, uh, which is really cool. Great build from Scott. Uh, this is a project from Chesley, and I think. I don't think he actually finished this. I think he was um, maybe working on it and was asking for some recommendations on how to do, uh, maybe asking how to do it. I don't see any any conduit in there. Hmm, not sure. I know I know he did a ladder rack. That's true, yep. Uh, on the outside, but I'm not sure if he actually built out the, the inside. Yeah, there is a van that somebody did build out the entirety of. Um, well, now we're back at the new YouTube series called Maker Pie Monday. That was 100 episodes ago. <laughs> um, this is cool. This is an early build from uh, Synergy Mill. who We've done an interview with Joey, who runs Synergy Mill. Uh, and they're, they're kind of a big... Uh, there's, there's a lot of history with Synergy Mill and Maker Pipe from the early days. But this is a really cool hack that they shared uh, with the connectors attached to the conduit. And instead of putting conduit in, in each of the T's, they just you know used it as a marker holder. Uh, actually, Dave posted this. Do you remember this hack? Yeah, from Joey. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah, it's really cool the way he stored the markers that way. Uh, this is another build early from the Kickstarter days. I think it was actually featured in the video. Uh, just a really simple uh, stool that uh, that they made. And, you know, it just uses a really simple technique of four connectors. Uh, 
which is just uh, – oh, we got Bigfoot in the chat. It says, howdy, y'all. Thanks for coming by, Bigfoot. <laughs> That's a cool username. Um, but, yeah, this stool, you know, really simple, just a you know, really easy build to do with four connectors. Um, but here's uh, – this is kind of a timely build for now what's going on with gardening and everything in the community. This is an enclosure from Michael shared early on. And what's really unique about this is the fact that there's a chicken coop, as you can see there. Um, and then from that chicken coop, I think they also have pigeons in it as well. They kind of just secured the conduit to the chicken coop and basically just built this enclosure uh, coming off the side of it, which allowed them to kind of give the birds free range in here to kind of move around and stuff. And they said they did this after a hawk came came in and took took some of the chickens and pigeons. Uh, but yeah, it's a really great enclosure from uh, from Michael early on. And here's a great one from Mike Jordan. This is a kayak cart. Uh, this is kind of a, you know, most of the time we reference a kayak cart, you see like the ones we have a kit of, which is just a simple kind of a triangle shape with wheels on the bottom and you just kind of move the kayaks around on it. This is a kind of a different solution that Mike made where it actually... It's like kayak storage. Right. But it does... He did build it specifically where this top level is even with uh, the back of his Jeep, I think. Or maybe his trailer. We've remember. had so many kayak... The, yeah. the, this, I felt like this was like the first of many mm -hmm. kayak storage solutions. I think so. Yeah, he just wanted to be able to move it around so right. he could load it easily. Mm -hmm. It's obviously not the same height as his Jeep, but... Yeah, I, I thought there was something that he made it specific for, but... Uh, I, I think guess, it was just loading. Okay. Yeah, just general moving around and stuff. But you can imagine, you know, just having these stacked here, it, say it has a much smaller footprint than having both of these laying down side by side or leaning up against something. And then using the PVC just kind of loose on top kind of gave rollers to not only protect the kayak, but also make it easier to kind of slide off. So Yeah, that was my favorite part of this. Yeah, re really cool from, from Mike... Uh, I, th I think you're right. One of the early, earliest kayak builds we saw. Oh, and speaking, Mike also did this. This is really cool. We've had a couple of people do this kind of thing where it's just a trolling motor on the back of the kayak. And the tube uh, that comes out of the motor, uh, I guess, was pretty close to the diameter of conduit, or it looks like really well. Um, then he just used one single 90-degree connector coming off of it and then using some eye hooks and... Uh, looks like drilled through the conduit, has the eye hooks there with the nut, and then he's just got some cable wire uh, attached to the eye hooks, and that that allows him to kind of steer with it. Because I think these, which Axel in the chat can probably give us more kayak information on something like this, but I think there's pedals in the front, and I think you, you kind of press one or the other to kind of steer, and so he's got the, the linkage here kind of connected to the eye hook to be able to do that, which is really cool to see. That's also from Mike. Uh, let's see here. This is a simple hack from Blake, just doing a paper towel holder. It just fits over top of the conduit. That's really simple. Oh, yeah. I'd, this... I'd go back because I think this is really underrated. Yeah. Like, I love this. <laughs> and, you know, it's just a simple way to hold paper towels in the shop. I don't know. Maybe it's Maybe it's too simple, but... I mean, if you already have a build out there, because like this was a workstation for a CNC mill, uh, and so he already has this pipe just exposed here, and just nothing else, not doing anything else, so just put paper towels on it. And yeah, I don't know. Keep yeah. it in mind. Yeah, Maybe it'll be helpful in the future. Yeah, for sure. It's a cool hack. Uh, and then next, Dave might can give some insight on this one. The Star Wars table, as it's known. Oh, yeah, Thomas. It's quite the throwback. It, it is. Um, man, so uh, Thomas is a designer, uh, does furniture, and wanted to give a crack at doing that with maker pipes. So he, he ordered a bunch and came up with this really cool idea for a table that was then dubbed uh, Stormtrooper Conference Table um, by our friend Ethan, which we thought was fitting. It kind of had that uh, futuristic stormtrooper look with mm -hmm. the white and black and the legs and all and um yeah we took some cool shots sent it to us posted on the community looked great and then it relived as this wasn't cool enough it relived as 
A 3D printer stand? A 3D printer stand. Because, oh, I remember what it was. Because Thomas was trying to come up with a a table to be put in a, ho- a hotel chain, right? Mm-hmm. He was designing. Oh, okay. he, he was contracted to do that. And I think, I think where it might have missed the mark, it was a lot of connectors, right? So I think that drove <laughs> maybe the price up and a lot of cuts. I don't know, but it didn't. You know, it ended up being um, some cool pictures and then a 3D printer, a really large 3D printer stand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you can see there. I think you removed the glass and it's just perfectly sits on there. You can kind of see. And I think, isn't his design firm or company Rocket Number 5? Pretty sure it's Rocket Number 5. Is it? Okay. I'm 99% sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so check out his Instagram. He posts a lot of cool stuff. But I think he mostly designs designs tables and stuff so definitely check him yeah out. and i think i've seen some designs past that mm-hmm. where he's done some really neat formed metal sheet metal and uh riveted together mm. really cool stuff slick slick designs nice i have to table that for later i don't know <laughs> that's your daily or weekly dad joke um we got some chat bigfoot said like to see a good e-bike trailer I have to keep an eye out. We talked about a scooter trailer, but I haven't haven't seen an e-bike trailer yet. Uh, and Axel said pedal steering using the arms on the shaft. Okay, that's good to know for the pedal for the pedal steering. So I think it is two pedals and then the arms on the shaft. And then Rock Video Monthly said he has a roll of shop towels hanging up like that. So it is a great hack. People are using it in the shop. So I guess you're right, Dave. It is uh it is a good one. Uh, and now we've got a build from Vindicated. Thank you, Rock Video <laughs> Monthly. Finally. Nice. Yeah. But but Bigfoot wanted to see an e bike trailer. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping we can get to Chris's e bike trailer eventually. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, we should be should be able to. Uh we'll we'll move these we'll move through these pretty quick so we we can see if we can get to that. If not, we'll just look it up towards the end. Uh, but this is a build from Bob. It's actually just the CAD model. I think he shared the actual build uh, here in a second, but he just used six T connectors and made this movie projector screen, uh, which is really great, uh, really simple design. And I think he secured it to, I want to say his roof or something like that. Um, but, you know, really great, simple and effective way to do a movie screen. Mm-hmm. And I think he turned us on to where you can find good quality movie screens as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. That thing, I think there's a, I forget what it's called, but I'll try to put it back in the comments later on if I can figure out what it is. Um, but here's a build, another build from Joey. We mentioned Synergy, Synergy Mill, the makerspace. Uh, he built, he hosts the TEDx Greenville every year, and he built a, a, a sign frame that kind of supports the letters. And what's really cool uh, is he used kind of a French cleat hack. So on the back of the, the sign, letters, is a French cleat that is angled, you know, like a French cleat is, and it sits and rests on the pipe. Uh, so that was really cool. And he reuses this every year. Uh, he uses the same connectors and conduit every year to kind of recreate the sign frame, which is really awesome. Yeah. Uh, this was creative because using a just a, a cut, an angled cut piece of wood attached to the back of the letters, it just dropped right, well, it just dropped right on that, that round pipe and mm-hmm. was able to, to connect. Is there a picture of that? Like I think I think later on he posted it, but I, I don't think in this initial post he shared the French cleat. It's okay. just these three pictures. Because um, it, it's like, I mean, there's that's a versatile kind of solution. Mm-hmm. Especially because uh, it's kind of like a quick removable thing. Yeah, right. Just on and off. Mm-hmm. And maybe, said, maybe we'll run across it. Yeah, and he said the letters are styrofoam, so they're not too heavy. Um, so, yeah, really great. Maybe we'll run into that. Cause I think he shared it pretty soon after this. Um, but here's a great microgreen hydroponic framework from Sean. And we can see kind of how he did this was really great because it allowed him to store the hydroponic stuff underneath. You know, he just built the framework and kind of elevated a couple feet off the ground. And so we can see some of the bins for the hydroponic, uh, kind of the water and everything, the nutrients and all that stuff. And the pump, I would imagine, is all in these two bins. So that was really cool. And he just built the framework to kind of support these these uh, trays he's got here resting on the pipes. And then he zip-tied the um, the grow lights to the framework. Uh, it's just a really, really great design. See some bracing in there with 45s. But this is one of the early hydroponic stands that we saw. 
So that's really great, Sean. Thanks for sharing that. And here's kind of a shot of the the plants are growing and enjoying it, which is really cool because a lot of times with gardening builds, we don't get to see the follow-up and see the status of the plant. So that's great. Uh, here's another enclosure from Sue, very similar to the one we looked at earlier. This kind of has the chicken coop and then the framework coming out of the uh, coming out of the chicken coop to kind of create it. And I think same reason, keep it hawk proof. Got to keep those chickens safe from the hawks. Uh, but this is a, a great enclosure from Sue. That that one was cool looking. Yeah, I really enjoyed it? that because it and it was painted too, right? It was mm -hmm. kind of that that burnt bronze. Right. Yeah, it has a really interesting aesthetic. It was just a good a good photo too. Yeah. With all the colors. Is. Yeah, it's nice. You got all the all the bushes here with the flowers and yeah the that kind of bronze copper color connectors and then yeah just a really nice picture, really great build. That chicken coop was cool too. Those chickens are living in style. <laughs> Definitely. Um, that's more more steel photos from Blake. This is an interesting Kickstarter build, and this is an interesting hack with the cafeteria plate. So it's just I a love this one. Simple framework. It just rest over top of the the washer and dryer. I guess this is specifically the washer. Um, you know, it's just four verticals, four nineties to create the kind of framework, and then they use T connectors as kind of like a sled of sort to actually hold up these cafeteria tables, and then it holds up the uh, the cafeteria tables are holding the, the detergents and different things. That's a really interesting hack for organization, especially if you've got some cafeteria trays laying around. Yeah, find a bunch of cafeteria trays. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can find a bunch. I imagine they re... re uh, what, what's the word? Not. I mean, they probably get new ones pretty often, so you can probably find some old ones. Surely on Facebook Marketplace, people are selling these. Sure, yeah. <laughs> probably pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. But that would be cool, I can imagine, for some... And, and notice, what's that on the left? Oh, paper towels. Paper <laughs> towel hack. Another person that okay. appreciates that. We have to keep a t we'll just have to keep a tally mark. Paper <laughs> towel hack tally, too. Okay, in, in future YouTube videos, when we do builds, we're going to start sneaking. <laughs> It'll just be something random, like the catapult Spot build. the paper towel hack. <laughs> yeah, that's a, new, that's a new game we're going to start. Nobody appreciates it, appreciates it. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I could see this being useful for like gardening. If you have hydro, like greenhouse shelves or something. Just I just think this is cool because it's like, all right, they wanted to optimize their space where they do laundry, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like the minimum thing you could do, right? Not, right. I mean, it was just like functional, get mm -hmm. it done. Here's where, how we're going to do it. Cafeteria tray. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's probably still in use. Right. Because otherwise, you got to go find a piece of wood that fits perfectly in here, or you have to cut it. Um, but it's just like, huh. So you just turn around and see those cafeteria trays sitting in the corner that have been there for years. And you're yeah. like, okay. <laughs> I, I feel like I would, do the, I would do something like this. Yep. That's a great build. I don't know if we don't have it, who posted it, but... Oh, <laughs> again, with the paper towel hack. <laughs> oh, I mentioned it. Even yeah. back then, you were super into the paper towel I hack. I was. That's cool. Oh, this is a great uh, pet kind of shelter. So they have a, a nice dog bed here made out of wood, and they just did four verticals. Actually, I think it's just three verticals. Yeah, just two in the front, one in the back, mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of made this simple framework, and they just have a tarp attached to it to give the give the dog some shade in the backyard. So that's yeah. really cool, really nice. simple. I don't, I don't see how the tarp is attached. Do you? Uh, probably just, oh, oh, I see. They just kind of pulled it tight underneath using the grommets of the tarp. They just use the kind of cable and the... Uh, like a cord or something. Yeah, yeah, like some tensioned, kind of pair of cord or something. Tensioned it across the frame. Mm -hmm. Right. Nice. Thanks to the community. We have over 150 members in the first week. All these builds are from the first week. Wow. Nice. That's cool. Oh, here's Bob's uh, projector screen. So we saw the CAD model, but here it is when he, when he kind of fully built it. And, uh, well, now it's not one to load. Um, but here it is when it's fully built. And I think you just use six T connectors uh, and just kind of made the framework uh, that way. Really simple. And then I think you just use some some paracord or something to secure it. And we did a video on different ways to do it. But We're coming up on summer movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's getting to be that, that uh, time of year, right? Where we'll see some outdoor projector screens. Yeah, that would be... Yeah, that'd be cool. We... We need to do another roundup or like a video. I don't know if you've ever done a video roundup with projector screens because we've had a lot of great ones posted in the community. 
So maybe we need to do a roundup of those. Uh, that'd be cool. It'd be cool to see a community kit with one of those as well. Uh, Axel <laughs> Rock Video Monthly said, "Where's it's the where, where's Waldo of Maker Pie packs? <laughs> <laughs> the where's the paper towel holder?" And then Axel said, "How about photo bombs with Sparky?" I don't know if you can see Sparky. Oh no, he's just out of frame. Just out of frame up there. That would be a good callback. But, but yeah, <laughs> Sparky's Sparky's uh, resting now. <laughs> we'll we'll throw him in there when you least expect it. Yeah, well. Yeah, we'll also sneak Sparky into. Oh, maybe that's what he meant by that. We'll sneak Sparky into. <laughs> we'll change out the arm, Sparky's arm, and he's gonna just gonna hold paper towels, and he's just gonna be <laughs> an, an advanced lamp slash paper towel holder. <laughs> Sp- that's uh, Sparky and paper towels. <laughs> extra extra fire hazard. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. All the wires <laughs> running through Sparky, and he's holding paper towels. That's fantastic. Maybe as, we can... as if he wasn't a big enough risk. <laughs> We're going to add a, fl- a fire source. Maybe we can um, secure, or not secure, maybe we can make some kind of uh, dispenser, or <laughs> he electric dispenser of paper towels. <laughs> so he just kind of unrolls them for you. He just holds them out. I don't know. It's probably a little too deep for, for Sparky. But anyway, that's a great projector screen from Bob. Here's a great Kickstarter build. Super simple. Four connectors. Make a headphone stand. Really great build, and this that, one. That was um, what's the caption say there on that one? Uh, headphone stand is a helpful addition to your desk. Backstory on this: We were at the Bay Area Maker Fair in California, made fast friends with some guys from Bose. Oh, nice. Yeah. The next day, they needed a headphone stand for their booth. Maker pipe to the rescue. Oh, there you go. We whipped that up on the fly. It was kind of a neat thing. Yeah, that is cool. That was cool. You made that connection, and then needed that the next day. We nice. never heard from him again. Oh, well. But at least they had a hel- headphone stand for the true that that Bay Area Maker Fair. Man, that was that was good times. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. I want to go to a Maker Fair. I've never been to a Maker Fair. Yeah, I mean it's uh, kind of you know disbanded at this point. Right. Hopefully, come back. Yep. Um, but next we got a good trellis from uh, Daniel. This is just a really simple trellis we, we usually see a lot of people do kind of like a cube structure on the outside um, but he just did kind of like a single panel uh, just using a few connectors and kind of up against the up against the back of the raised bed and he maybe buried the conduit I'm not sure but it's a really great great trellis design from uh, from Daniel I think Dave posted this one oh Kelly ago. says Kelly corrected uh, she said that actually they did order some connectors oh. later on nice that's cool but this is a great trellis from daniel now we've got there's another build from sue uh we saw the did sue build this or did rich build this uh i think we all kind of worked on it together nice i think kelly and i helped build this uh this was kind of like an all-in-one craft quilting uh workstation yeah with uh and we, we were just there was a desk here, right? Mm-hmm. And it, we wanted to up our, uh, Sue wanted to up our desk game and have a better space for, for working. So we just kind of brainstormed, okay, what do we have to put in this space? Where should it be? And we did a sketch, and then this is, this is what came out of that. Nice. Yeah, it's a really good example of a custom workstation that's kind of built around what you need it to do. Right, because she loves quilting, has a lot of beautiful quilts to display, that's what that side is. Uh, you know, there are printers and different craft boxes. So, yeah. Nice. It, it was a neat build. Is it all tees? Looks like all tees. It was a lot of tees. Oh, nice. I don't know if it, if it was entirely. Oh, here you go. This is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think there's, there's, a com- there's like companies out there that make frameworks specifically for... Uh, forts Mm -hmm. you know like blanket forts and like that's all they sell is these framework for blanket forts so i was inspired and um (laughs) bailey wanted a blanket fort one day uh our daughter and there she is she's enjoying her blanket fort nice with an impromptu maker pipe frame can i do one of those over my desk at work i have a (laughs) can i have a maker pipe fort (laughs) over my desk (laughs) maybe we'll have a (laughs) 
a day that you can do that, Jake. <laughs> okay. Not permanently. Next time we live stream, I'm going to start and I'm just going to like open the curtain, be like, you know, hello. <laughs> anyway. Join the rest of the team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is our first ever episode of Maker Pipe Monday. Oh, gosh. Don't play that. <laughs> <laughs> Maker Pipe Monday zero zero one, nice. Wow, and we're at a hundred. Yep, that's nice. really cool. That's awesome. And then this is about some of the Kickstarter stuff. Another great table from Sue. I think it's, is it the same table? Those two tables? I think they're a little bit different. Different. There's a coffee table, or sorry, side table. It's just four nineties, and then this is kind of a, an interesting stand for a pump for a fish tank. Right. Go down. That that was uh, you know what I thought was cool. Click on can you click on one of those photos? Mm -hmm. See how that has like a a wood trim around uh, the outside. Yeah, this was a a top from I believe it was like a like a a, a dinner. What do they call those? Oh, uh, like the trays, dinner trays. Dinner dinner, dinner tray. Dinner tray. Yeah. No, that's not the right word for it. Eating this, tray. Yeah, yeah. You know, like. Yeah, you you put it in front of your couch mm -hmm. and you eat dinner with it, like a TV tray. Dinner? Yes, TV tray. Mm. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, so it broke or something like that. And I I really thought it was neat because you had this little piece of wood all the way around. And if you go to the next photo, it did a cool job of kind of just hiding the conduit. Oh wow, that's really slow. Yeah. But look how it it kind of gives a little bit of a. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that is cool. Like an a trim. offset kind of thing. I don't know what you'd call that. Yeah. I'm, I'm at a loss. But anyway, I thought that was neat. Yeah, that is neat. Yeah, thanks for sharing that detail. Cause I, I didn't realize that. or I never really noticed that. But that's cool. Did you have to secure it in there, or did you kind of just build it where it was kind of tight in there? I don't know. I'm sure you'd want to secure it, but it was locked in by those, those pieces of wood. Nice. And this is another cool one. This is made for a, a fish tank pump. Which I guess is what that is. And what are those wire? Don't know. Not yeah. sure. Just to get it off the ground, you know? Right. Yeah, that's cool. Really simple structure, but really great. Um, here's kind of what we talked about earlier with uh, the, the sh uh, trade shows doing some... Pipe and drape. Yeah, pipe and drape stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. Oh, this is a cool roof rack. One of the early ones. Is this the first ever roof rack? What kind of car was that? Is this the XB, Scion XB? I don't think so. I think that's something It does look pretty like unique. A, looks like a Japanese car or something, maybe. Um, but I think, I guess the roof rack is an all conduit. I think this is the roof rack, and then it had this tube here. I see some kind of a shim in there. So just kind of adapted conduit. But you've seen some other builders do that, where you kind of build off of the roof rack and you kind of add uh you know some more cross pipes to be able to hold solar panels or you know baskets or whatever else you want sure um which is a great technique to do just to kind of build off of an existing pipe like that that's wild looking yeah uh, yeah I, I don't know what kind of car that is but if anybody in the chat knows definitely let us know but it must be some kind of like that looks like a nissan like skyline or something rear bumper <laughs> So I wonder if it's like some kind of Japanese that would van be, or something. That would be a waste of a Nissan Skyline rear <laughs> bumper. I know. It's probably not even remotely close to being that either. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody recognizes what kind of car that is. Because aren't, aren't no. Nissan Skylines like pretty oh, yeah. expensive retro cars? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, you can't buy them. Like they didn't make them over here. You have to import them. And they have to be a certain amount of years old. Uh, I think they have to be... 20, 20 years old or something at least before you can import them like legally. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's because of that you have to pay a lot for them. Uh, but so yeah, I I doubt that's a <laughs> skyline rear bumper, but you never know. Oh, this is one of the first build videos we ever did of how to make the soccer goal. That's cool. It's just a few T connectors. It was a pretty efficient way to make a soccer. Yeah. Goal for sure. It was. Uh, yeah, because it was only two, four, six, I think like 10, 12 T connectors. And you can actually get this kit now. We have this as a community kit. Nice. Uh, but we got this uh, net, you know, on Amazon, I think Amazon, and uh, just fit this frame perfectly. They included the Velcro straps, so really simple. I don't, I don't kick very hard, but I tried really hard to knock it over. Like mm -hmm. full, full kick, full force. Did pretty good. Nice. 
I, miss, yeah. I missed more times than I actually hit the net. Yeah, we were trying to just get a, a <laughs> shot. Just that we were doing the video and like the final shot, we were just trying to get of kicking it in the goal. And the amount of times we had to run off and go chase the ball down because it was just <laughs> Dave was trying to kick it as hard as possible, or I was trying to kick it as hard as possible, and it was just. I probably mm. hurt myself too. Yeah, <laughs> you and Bailey had fun though. Yeah, it was cool. Oh, this is a cool hack. This is uh, this is great for guarding and stuff too. Right now, um, if you're trying to secure a frame or something like an enclosure or a trellis frame outside, you can just get these stakes uh, from Lowe's or Home Depot, um, and they're not too expensive. Well, that's rebar. Is it rebar? Yeah. Oh, okay. But to your point, you can also get the the stakes, the black stakes that work really well. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess there is a difference. I never really thought about that, but yeah, this is rebar. You just hammer it into the ground, and then you just slide the conduit over top of it. Yep, does a pretty good job. Yeah, works pretty well, especially if you're just trying to hold like a freestanding frame or something like that. Oh, this is cool. This is uh, another vehicle rack. This is for a Jeep. I think they were building a soft top frame. Mm -hmm. I think is what they, they said. And they just uh, attached the conduit to a few different points on the framework. This is like a classic Jeep. And then it's even like in the back. I guess the soft top frame probably utilizes utilize most of these mounts and they just put conduit in them instead of the uh the existing framework that's a cool jeep yeah it is a cool jeep really classic nice oh this is cool i remember this it's really cool to see some of these older builds because right. it's been a while since we, we haven't looked, looked at, at them. them yeah um this is uh you know as you can see like a dual sport bike is that a dual sport bike it looks like it maybe not um but he made this rack for it um, which is really cool because I think he, I don't know if he drilled into the frame or if there was like a mount already there, uh, but he basically just used a bolt through a washer, through the connector, and then through another washer and then like threaded it into the, the frame. That's kind of how he adapted it, uh, adapted the rack to the frame. And I think there's a shot of the saddlebags he used. I guess you call them saddlebags. I don't know. Um, yeah, here it is kind of like all finished and he was using it just to add extra storage mm -hmm. yeah yeah because you got to support those things mm -hmm. yeah especially if you load them down with a lot of stuff if you're traveling pretty long distance and stuff so yeah that was really cool the way he did that it was one of the first i don't know if there's conduit in there too or if it's just a bolt and washers not really sure but either way really cool really cool hack oh there's the video for the soccer goal which is up on the channel Oh, this is uh, from Johnny Builds, who's another uh, kind of uh, YouTuber creator friend of a fr friend of ours, and he made this overhead rack, and he's using some really cool camera mounts. Did, did those like slide back and forth on the pipe freely, or do you remember? No, I think this was something he found on Amazon. Okay, um, but you know, did the trick. Yeah. Because I think he was doing like time lapses because I think he was doing some like epoxy tables and stuff. Right. Yeah. And want to shout out his channel, Johnny Builds. Mm -hmm. uh, has a great DIY channel, builds all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, for Go sure. Go check that out. He's been doing some cool Star Wars stuff lately. Uh, he did like a table and stuff the other day. But, but yeah, definitely check him out. Um, uh, there's a 3D model of the soccer goal. Mm -hmm. Blake did. And Blake has done a series on kind of how to 3D model things mm -hmm. with Fusion, if you're interested in that. It's on the channel. Yeah. Um, oh, this must be like, yeah, second episode. Is that episode two? Yep. Oh, that's the real bad one. Nobody go look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we play it? No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. Please don't. <laughs> Another build from Joey. This is a great storage rack he built over top of his laser. Uh, really, I think... The cool hack here is those uh, neodymium magnets. Right. That he... So he put magnets oh, on on the on the conduit you know just super strong magnets and then he was able to hang uh tools and keychains by put just placing them there that was a joey's always full of of good ideas yeah that is cool and these this kind of like i don't know what i guess he's just kind of cushioning the the frame or i mean the against the laser just using the pull noodles or the electrical pipe insulation yeah pipe insulation that's what i was looking for uh, it's just kind of uh, maybe a vibration dampener. Not really sure, but yeah, great hacks in there. Here's another uh, drone racing. So this is from Joe Scully, who Joe runs. Joe Scully. Yeah, he he's the drone race director for, is it MultiGP? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was making some. Rodeo announcer in his spare time. Oh, wow. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Um, but he made similar to Jim made some some cool drone gates uh, using Maker Pipe and conduit. That's really cool. This is I'm not, I don't know if I know too much about this. Do you have any insight on this one? Yeah. So this is a a local uh, STEM school that we have here in our area. And they have a number of different like fairs and, and they've really uh, supported us uh, along the way. And we were just trying to come up with cool builds, you know, to feature maker pipe and have it this, um, you know, science children's science center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know where this idea came from, <laughs> but you know, I, I thought it'd be cool to make a seesaw and I wanted to see if Maker Pipe would, would last the whole day with kids just abusing it. And it did pretty good. And, nice. it, and it was nothing but a triangle mm -hmm. with kind of two seats on it. Nobody got hurt, thankfully. Uh, and it and it lasted. Nice. It just kind of rotates on that. I mean, it doesn't really rotate, Yeah, it just pivots. Yeah, it pivots. It's back cool. and forth on that one bottom pipe that's black. I've never noticed the little like stopper that you had here on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Right. Cool. So it didn't go all the way to the ground. It, it kind of stopped and you, you, you uh, still were kind of squatting and you could push off. Nice. But yeah, I mean, that thing got used constantly throughout <laughs> the day. I uh, bet. So it's pretty cool. That's cool. Here's a cool one from Max. This is uh, a whiskey shelf that also has a dog bed kind of framework underneath. Okay. See that? We go from STEM education, <laughs> science center to whiskey shelf. <laughs> It co it just covers the gamut. Yep, you can build anything <laughs> <laughs> from seesaws to whiskey shelves. <laughs> just don't combine the two. <laughs> yeah, don't don't try to seesaw. lay off the whiskey when you're on the seesaw. <laughs> That's funny, but this is a really beautiful shelf that he made with uh, reclaimed wood, and you know, really really simple design. But I think I I think it's neat when I love seeing when people put a little bit extra refinement mm -hmm. you know in a build mm -hmm. like that reclaim wood and finishing off those shelves is right you know it takes some time right yeah and it's kind of I, I love seeing that because they're putting love into the build extra effort mm -hmm. it's kind of kind of like a step above the utilitarian kind of stuff sure yeah because sometimes you know you just build something you're like okay i gotta get this done today i've got a few hours left on this saturday i gotta finish it so whatever wood i can find <laughs> And I'm just gonna make it, but right. It's like you got the laundry tray table oh, yeah. <laughs> level, and then it's nice to see a couple notches above. Mm -hmm. We should do that one. I mean, we should do a a more refined build sometime. Yeah, it'd be cool. I w I want to build like a, a storage shelf, so maybe we'll do some kind of nice storage shelf. It would be cool to do like a conference table or something that was like epoxy, because I'd like to try out epoxy too. Yeah, like making like a really nice table and then turning it into like a nice desk or a conference table or something. Yeah, cool. that is kind of the move. Yeah, especially nowadays, people are doing all kinds of cool stuff with epoxy tables. I'd like to set, we've talked about this a ton for years of setting, like doing a, like a river run table and building it where the conduit and connectors can be seen in the epoxy. Right, set them in there. Mm-hmm. So you could actually like look at them set in there. It'd be cool. Some kind of table like that. Oh, uh, here's a great bill. I can't believe it's been two years since we first saw this post. Uh, this is a roof rack that Joe Bacon and the Bacon's Rebellion on Instagram. Sw switch to the screen. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the Bacon's Rebellion on Instagram. Um, they they you they have the Sprinter van and they um, they travel. Oh, 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 oh. What? It's not a Sprinter van. It's not. No. What kind of van is it? It's a it's a Dodge. Oh, uh, Promaster. That's H right. How are you gonna insult Joe like that? I'm sorry, Joe Sprint, Bacon. Sprinter van. Excuse me, Joe Bacon. I'd like to formally apologize <laughs> for the mistake. But Dave is correct. It's a Promaster van. You know what's funny though? I realized in the interview, the customer interview, I think you called it a Sprinter in the intro. Oh, do I? I think so. Well, I, can't I also would like to apologize for <laughs> to Joe. I I realize that that's uh it's kind of like a a slight mm. you know here Joe has a Ram Promaster and to call it a Sprinter that's that's not good yeah yeah the the rivalries rivalries run deep for the manufacturers 
And then there's just a Chevy Astro van at the very bottom of a, at the tier. You can call it whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Jake has. Yeah, that's, I should clarify. That's what I have. The good old 2000 Astro van. It's as old as I am. Which Jake did a, um, a pull-out bed mm. um, out of Maker Pipe recently. Mm. He did a build. We're thinking about doing more van conversion content as the summer's hitting, maybe more camping. Yeah, so. we've both been talking about it for years. And, you know, especially I kept talking about how I was going to do it. All I needed was the van, and then I have the van and haven't really done anything much yeah, with it. Yeah, now it's time to do it, man. Yeah. Paul says, I love Maker Pipe new user. I'm planning to build field show props for the high school marching band. That's that's great to yeah. hear. Cause I, I love to hear from marching band uh, folks. There were a while there where we, you guys weren't hitting us up. I mean, it, you know. Nobody was. Because really, we weren't going yeah. to school, <laughs> right? Or <right? laughs> doing marching bands. So it's great to hear that you guys are out there and uh, and doing that again. Yeah, there was a really early build early on. We might see uh, if it's soon um, of the Tiki. Remember the Tiki volcano? Yeah, there were Half volcanoes. Tiki. There's just so many super creative things you can do, and that's a really creative group. So I mm-hmm. uh, can't wait to see what you what you come up with. Yeah, for sure. If you need any help at all, definitely feel free to call us or reach out to us. We're happy to. We don't know a whole lot about marching bands, but where we can help is the conduit and <laughs> the connections. So you just let us know your idea and stuff like that if you ever need any help. And that goes for anybody out there building anything. Um, we know we can try to help where we can. Uh, here's a great surfboard rack from Heavy's Culture. Uh, this is really cool. Which has been a great supporter, uh, kind of, you know, just liking our stuff. We really appreciate that. Yeah. And I think this is one of the early hacks or kind of uses of the um pool noodle as a as kind of a cushion and we saw it with the uh, laser cutter but just to protect the surfboards you don't want bare conduit against the surfboard just use pool noodles which were super cheap and just wrapped it around the pipe slid it over top made this really great rack i like that board yeah it's a nice surfboard i had one similar ones nice I like those colors oh yeah that's cool oh, yeah the, the kelly that? bought it for me oh cool then i sold it sorry kelly <laughs> sorry kelly but this is a, a great rack, and uh, I, that's cool that he did this kind of bent. Oh, I bet those are the pre-bent 90s you can buy. Could be, yeah. That's cool. He's got the whole thing on casters, roll it around. Really great build. Paul said, I've already put together prototypes to show the school. We have some very complex designs planned. MakerPipe is a perfect solution. I can't wait to show them off when they're done. Neat. That's cool. We can't wait, to, can't wait to see them. That'll be awesome. Nice. What's the theme? If you don't, can we get a little sneak peek? Can you tell us the theme of the the marching band? Halftime? Is it like a halftime show? Probably. I would imagine most of the time it's, or is it like a marching band show that you do? Like I don't competition? know. We are out of our element. Yeah, here. definitely. Um, but, but it sounds like he's got a plan. Yeah, it's gonna be gonna be cool. And uh, Christopher's next build is really cool. This is a kind of a backyard kind of sanctuary kind of place <laughs> it's funny somebody commented on the post that we said and asked if they were trying to summon something here <laughs> uh, but you can see they've got this <laughs> beautiful fire pit in this kind of like sitting area and uh this yeah. is another one of those builds like where christopher like put in some extra effort on mm-hmm. the woodwork right because all those panels i think he made those mm-hmm. that connect from the maker pipe and there's like a maker pipe structure behind it but he, he spent a lot of time on it. And it shells, I, I, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. And I, I think he reinforced it with cables uh, that go into the ground. Okay. And I think he even drilled into the stone, he said. Right. And set the set the conduit down in the stone to kind of to kind of reinforce it that way as well. But, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful back area. Yeah, you can kind of see here. Or maybe it's just flanges drilled into the stone there. Oh, but that's cool. That's an early use of the, the flanges using some of the off-the-shelf. I think he drilled and then maybe put a flange on top. Mm, Probably so. Don't know. But great build. A lot of of effort there. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it paid off. It's a really nice area to kind of hang out and and relax in. Uh, Next is a build from Brennan. I remember this one. This is uh, He's got a mobile detailing company, and he just rides around in his van and does mobile detailing. And he built this really great framework uh, with conduit. And then he just used some wood paneling to kind of create these shelves. 
It's got its generators in there, the spool for the hose, all kinds of stuff. Another early uh, flange jack. Oh, yeah. Is that the set the screw coupler? Threaded, I don't know. It looks like it, the set screw coupler with the threaded flange. Can't tell. I can't tell. I think so, though, because you can kind of see a little bit of a ridge there. Yeah. But anyway, that is that is cool, one of the early uses of the, the threaded flanges. And that's, like Dave was saying earlier, kind of inspired a lot of the stuff that we did. We just kind of rounded up solutions from the community because all the stuff that people share is so brilliant. Um, you know, that was one of the early videos that we did. I right. guess it was more early last year. Um, just a roundup of all the different flanges that people made in the community. And then, I mean, to show how that kind of evolves, then we, we did the testing of the flange. We showed off that hack. It was popular. And we even gave a shot at making our own flange, mm -hmm. which we which we do now, you know, stamping out of metal, which is uh, what all of our connectors are made out of. So it's neat to see that evolution starting from one of these community posts, and that's why they're they're so great to see. Right, and the design and the kind of stuff that we included in the flange was kind of inspired by those different unique solutions that people came up with. Yep. Like one of the For early sure. ones was the reinforcement hack which basically you just have um, kind of a the threaded pipe insert in the conduit, and then it sits inside the conduit, and then you have this kind of recess back here. There's a washer uh, that fits in there with a set screw, uh, or with a just a, what is it, what's those called, socket cap screw? Yeah. Um, but anyway, the, you know, one of the community flanges reinforcement included that hack, so that kind of just inspired and, and us to include it. Um, but anyway, that's a great build from Brennan. Uh, really cool to see mobile detailing business. And here's one. Oh gosh, <laughs> there are all kinds of pipes and tubes at your local hardware store. This is this is one of the early videos we did of the pipe sizing guide, so that we we kind of rounded up the PVC, the wood, and all the different things that work with the connectors. Which Jake just recently kind of did another version of. Yeah, yeah. Recently we kind of updated, or not really updated, because it's all the same kind of pipes and stuff that were used. But we made a we made a little chart. That kind of just shows um, shows all the different ones that you can connect to, and um, the shims you need to do that. Which you can find that in the community as well. It's under my profile. Um, but that was really cool. Here's another projector screen from Scott, and it's similar to Bob's. It's kind of just the framework here that the projector screen is attached to, and then it's it's just I guess there's like wood wooden beam here that's maybe attached to their their back deck or something. And they just used two hole straps and secured the conduit to the the beams, uh, or the beam there, and it's just holding up the projector screen. I, I think this is a. I don't. How should I say this? Um, a way to connect a conduit structure to a flat surface mm -hmm. that doesn't get used as much as I think it should. Mm -hmm. And and I get it. Like you know, you you've got that hole pipe there right mm -hmm. so you're gonna see it but as far as a strong way to do things and connect a piece of conduit to a flat piece mm -hmm. like this is a good way to do it yeah for sure. you know because the way that t connector is oriented it's um it's not going anywhere it's pretty strong right and you've got you know you've got a lot of load well i mean it's a projector screen but imagine if you like mm -hmm. pulled down on that the connector is really holding tight mm -hmm around there and, and like you'd be hard pressed to to do that in some other way so right. i don't know i'm a i'm a fan of this even though we don't see it a whole lot mm -hmm. yeah that is because i guess if you were to say if you didn't do the t connector here and didn't orient it this way then the strap would be secured to this vertical pipe and you know like dave was saying i think it's the way he did it was really smart so yeah that's a good design and a good uh a good kind of way to do the the kind of strengthening of a vertical pipe like that so that's really great thanks so much for sharing that scott next up is another projector screen see all these projector screens it's kind of cool in the community we see it's pretty common if you kind of go back through and kind of see the time of year the stuff was posted you know you'll see a bunch of trellises enclosures gardening stuff all at once and then kind of gets later in the summer you start seeing all kinds of projector screens and then uh, you know it goes later in the summer you start seeing halloween and christmas decorations and you know all kinds of different stuff so it's kind of funny to see the the different seasonality of builds, but but next up is another projector screen, and this is a different design because instead of it being attached directly to the house, it's actually got its own stand, and you can see here, 
it's just a really, really simple stand. There's just two verticals, two cross pipes from side to side. And then this is a good representation of, I think those are ball bungees. Um, you know, we did a video on different ways you could kind of attach fabric and stuff like that to, uh, to kind of a frames and the ball bungees were a really great method because they just go through the, the grommet there and then just kind of give you a, a secure kind of grab on the material. Just don't get the Harbor Freight ones. Those are junk. I heard you say that to a customer the other day, but I, you didn't like those? No, because the, the bungee cord mm. of the ball bungees was like provided no resistance, mm. right? It just stretched out immediately. We had to double them up. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. I mean, they, they might have been super cheap, but like... I don't know. I was that that was that wasn't something you buy at Harbor Freight for sure. I I see. I always thought that was because of the length. Because whenever you buy them, you buy like a six inch length, and I think that I, I'm probably totally wrong, but I think that means whenever you like tighten it and put the ball bungee together, then it's six inches long. In once it's like tightened or not. I don't tightened, know. I just I don't know that the the bungee material right off the bat seemed super cheap and like provided no resistance. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, just my take on it. Maybe yeah. it'll work for you, but yeah, they were, I mean, and also you can get them on Amazon. I think they're pretty cheap and, um, probably know. equally as crappy. <laughs> probably the, but anyway, they, they are, if you can find good ones, they do secure stuff with grommets really well. You can see there, it's kind of creating that tension around the frame. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's the way to go, mm -hmm. you know. You yeah. you rounded up all those different ones, and it seemed like ball bungee. You, if you've got grommets, mm -hmm. can't beat it for sure. And the tarp clips, I really like those as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the ball bungees are probably the best best method for that kind of a thing. Uh, this is another desk. This is really unique because of the shape of it. You can tell. Oh yeah, this build. Mm -hmm. I like this build a lot. Yep. I posted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't make it, but I, I it was emailed to us. That's right. Yep. And it's cool because it's, you know, normally you see an L-shaped desk or just a normal desk. It goes up against the wall. But they had this, there's probably like some air vents or something in there, just this odd corner that was just really weird, kind of sticking out here in the corner. Yeah. So they just built the desk around it. Excellent example of... You've got a strange space. You need something custom. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, this is as strange of a... I mean, you can't buy something like that, right? Oh, so, for sure. So, uh, a good example of that. Because you want to be able to have this one be flush with this wall, and this one be flush with this wall, but you still got to mine that gap there. And uh, they did that well, just by having a little bit of overlap there. Yeah. So, really great desk. Are we going to do all all builds ever? I don't know. It's just... just uh, we're just never going to stop streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Video Monthly said the tarp clips are awesome. Uh, Somebody's see. still out there. Thanks, Rock Video Monthly. Yeah, he's enjoying it. <laughs> nice. All right, so give me a... Or at least he's still here. Yeah. All right, this is episode of three. It's crazy to think all those builds were posted in one week. Right. And then we had, I think it's because, oh, Warren said, hey, everyone from Nantucket this time. Hey, Warren. Hey, Good Warren. to have you. Nice. From Nantucket. That's awesome. So, yeah, this is episode three. Okay, give me a cat. Oh, there's some good ones coming up, though. <laughs> oh, we got that duck blind, mm -hmm. the boat duck blind. Yep. Maybe we, let's go quick. Okay, we'll, we'll go let's quick. Let's, like, pick up the pace. Okay, okay. Duck blinds. This is a world that we got exposed to. Yep. There's pontoon, a good example. Pontoon boat built a framework around it. They have to be custom. Mm -hmm. This next one is a great, this is a, a church that created an LED array backdrop. I, maybe one of the biggest things that's ever been made Probably. With maker pipe, this that. is like thirty feet high, oh and a million feet long. Look at how long it is! It was so many connectors, and then they ran LED strips down the verticals, programmed it, and it created a backdrop. Yeah, it's ginormous. Yeah, you can see it there. Wow. Yeah, that's got to be one of the biggest builds ever. Like yeah. you said, very really cool. cool. Simple composting rack. <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> Uh, this was at the Mother Earth oh, yeah. Festival in Asheville that we kind of showed off Maker Pipe. We had we were trying to think of like, okay, what are some things so we could show the uses of Maker Pipe uh, for a homestead or gardener, you know, composting bin? Because you make it out of wood, it rots. It's going to last four or five years, maybe less, right? So um, I cut myself something awful on that hardware cloth. Really? Though. Yeah. 
That's tough. That was. Ne- it, I should have had better gloves. Yeah, that is a good uh, mention though. Hardware cloth is great for enclosures and stuff like this. Yeah, and it was elevated off the ground, so you got airflow on the bottom. Oh. Helped the composting. Nice. I thought it was cool. Yeah, I don't that know. Is cool. We haven't seen too many compost bins. A couple here and there. It's just, I've seen like a recycling cart uh, that was like holding aluminum cans. And we saw that one a while ago. Um, but yeah, there's been a few. The Urban Worm Bag, I think, is the most recent, which I guess was a while ago, too. True. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Oh, Betty Jean's Flower Truck. Nice. They just built this simple canopy over the back, and they use this for weddings and stuff. And they just built this canopy that sits over top of, the, over top of all the flowers in the back and everything. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, that's great. Uh, here's a canopy posted, really simple. Uh, I think I think I say every build is simple design. <laughs> Warren said it's Monday, the new day for lives. This is kind of a special episode. We're we're trying to figure out a good day and time. We we might start doing it from the shop, um, but yeah, we were just doing like a special ed- episode of Maker Pipe Monday this week. Um, but maybe, maybe we'll start doing Mondays. Do you guys like Mondays? Let us know. Monday at seven seemed like it worked worked pretty well. Uh, you know. Just let us know what you think. Um, but, yeah, this is a, a great awning built by Jamie in California. Um, really good design. But anyway, I was saying I think I say every design is simple. <laughs> and great. Yeah, simple and, and great. Awesome. Fantastic. Cool. All those adjectives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rock Video Monthly said you guys should have a section on your site where you list all the cool third-party accessories you feature in your videos. Yeah, that that's a good idea. That's true, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is a good, like, a hack corner. That would be cool to have like links to other things. We also talked about doing, so they do something in skateboarding where they do like trick bounties. Is that right, Dave? Where they do like somebody post a trick. If and they do, I've never gotten one. <laughs> basically, so, basically, the concept don't is. Don't ask me. Basically, the concept is you do a, a bounty. So they'll say, do, I don't know, any skateboard tricks. Do a kickflip 360 something. I don't know. <laughs> something gnarly. And then they try to challenge everybody to do that. We thought it would be funny to do kind of like a, a bounty hack or a hack bounty where somebody could post like a solution they needed and do like a, a hack bounty for that. I don't know. Something interesting. Uh, this is a cool. This is uh, okay. We're going to do we're going to do five more. Okay. So whatever the next five are. Five? Yeah. Is that too many? Okay. We'll do five quick. This is a cable reel. It's got a center support pipe on this frame, and they just use it to roll up this cable. Who did this? David posted it. <laughs> oh. It was emailed in. Yeah, it must have been emailed I in. I didn't but, build that. But yeah, really cool, really simple, great way to store cables. Branding some Maker Pipe logos into the steel. Oh, here it is, the Urban Worm Bag. Ah, the Urban Worm Bag. This company, go ahead. No, you, you, you okay. want to explain it. Yeah, this company... Rock Video Monthly said the bounty paper towel dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well done. That's that's a good reference. That's a good callback. <laughs> nice one. With this urban worm bag, you can buy this bag, but they don't really. Um, well, they have like a plastic PVC. Uh, no, frame. not even that. They no, just, no, they just buy this bag and they say, "Hey, maybe you can make another PVC if you want to do it with PVC." Here's the instructions, but they don't really like have one site, one on their site or anything. At least last time I looked. Uh, so somehow the, you know, I think it was, yeah, William found us and um, basically built the, I guess he followed their instructions because it's very similar, you know, just eight 90 degree connectors and then made this framework to hold the. Or this should bag. be a community kit. It should. Yeah, we'll have to do that. For all the worm. Um, worm bags, urban worm bags. I, I saw composting. that. I saw that Kevin from Epic Gardening used this. Oh, nice. Uh, I think they actually sell them on their site. Oh, cool. Um but yeah, this is a great composting bag, urban worm bag. Uh, oh, here it is. The the trailer for the <laughs> my unbalanced clumsy pug was making fabric rub on the tire. And he was about to give up on the thing when he found Maker Pipe. Uh, saved the day. All I got was four connectors. I think I think what he did was just kind of created this framework, this kind of reinforced the cart. Right. He just braced it. Right. So the pug didn't stick his <laughs> face out the side. Because <laughs> you can see where it was rubbing against the tire and causing there to be a hole. So instead, he just braced it with <laughs> a few T's and some conduits. Man, it's awesome. Nice. Okay, we've got two more. Oh, same post. Oh, this is the marching band. Cool. Perfect. So this is the um, 
a marching band that they built. They were doing like a, excuse me, was it like a Hawaiian theme maybe? They had like volcanoes and tiki huts, all kinds of stuff. But they built this framework um, to kind of hold all of the materials up for the, um, what, what is that stuff called? Thatch. Thatch? Like grass, grass mm-hmm. thatch, yeah. Okay, so yeah, they made this framework that kind of went around the cart, and it held up the thatch, which we'll see here in a moment. There we go. Kind of. I guess you'd call that thatch. I don't know. Sounds good to me because I have no clue. Like <laughs> leaves. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can see where they made this kind of tiki hut using the thatch and the framework, and they were able to easily just roll them out onto the field at halftime. Then they also had a volcano that had a. Uh, as you can see, there it is. There's the volcano. Is the framework for that with make pipe? No clue. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I know all the tiki huts are for sure. That had like a smoke machine in it, and you could, um, they they it was built into their halftime show where, where it would like erupt, which is cool. And I bet the crowd would also erupt. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. And the last build that we're gonna look at tonight is. Tony's Garden Enclosure. This is a great garden enclosure. Yeah, we're coming up on garden enclosure season. Yeah, it I is that say. time. Protect yeah. your gardens. For sure. He said his blueberries were at risk. He said they, they could never figure out why the blueberries, well, the yield wasn't that great, but then they realized the birds are coming in. So they made this. But what's really cool is, you know, you could just do like a, a square or cube and you have this flat roof, but instead... What he did was he had 45 degree connectors here attached to the vertical and then bent the conduit to make this angled or pitched roof. Was it conduit or PVC on the top there? Oh, it's it's conduit. Cuz I have seen We've seen where PVC has been used on mm-hmm. the top too to get that bend a little bit easier. True. Cuz you can just yeah, you don't have to actually use a bender for it. This it naturally flexes and you're able to use it. Right. Um like that. Nice. Then he just braced it with uh, 180 degree connectors and the T connectors, and then added the enclosure material. So All right, that's it. That's awesome. Here's to 100 MPMs, maybe 100 more. I don't yep. know. Thanks everybody for posting their builds. We'll see you soon. For sure. Yep. Keep posting the builds. We'll keep doing the episodes. It's our favorite part of the week. But that's all the builds we're gonna look at. Thanks for joining us and throwing it back to some to some classic builds in the early community. Thanks everybody for all the interaction and for posting everything like that. Uh, It's been a pleasure as always, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, have a good night.